is viewed differently one as the beginning the other as the end beginning being the birth the end being the death that is the division but what is birth what is death why to the answer by ramana maharshi is this no one needs to cry for the dead no one needs to cry for the dead because they are soon to come again they are going to return change their dress and they'll come back that's all so we don't need to cry for those who are dead because they are sure to come back punarapi jananam punarapi maranam punarapi janani jathare shayanam they are born repeated it is a cycle so one need not die another reason even if you take worldly sense nobody needs to cry because it is only seniority calendar difference one has to follow the same route same route <laughs> towards the end nothing to worry about it all are sure to leave is a question of calendar that's all therefore if we just go to the basic philosophy basic philosophy of life as viewed by bhagwan let me say few points here the beginning we have come to know that unity is divinity that the divinity is undivided this division at the individual appeared because of birth and death beginning and end but actually life is beginningless and equally endless the life principle is a continuous journey without beginning and an end then question is why what do you mean by birth what do you mean by death what is it that is reborn birth and rebirth what is it if the life is continuous what is it that is born and reborn answer is simple it is ego ego so long there is ego he is going to be born again and again and again something like reservation so right from the beginning we make reservation to be reborn because this ego is rising day by day advancing advancing every day we are improving with compound interest in ego so we are sure to come back there is no doubt about it somebody said anil kumar don't you want what do you say about uh, uh, immortality birthlessness i said i have no idea because the scripture says anyone with one idea we is sure to be born again with one desire i have liking for hot coffee and hot stuff pickles and all that so there will be many more births to come and i am also not in a hurry for immortality i don't think how it looks and as i told bhagwan plainly i wish to be born again and again having tasted this life what is the taste of life in relation to me i enjoyed the deliciousness or the taste and the melody melody beauty by spreading the divine message of bhagwan sri sachai baba if i i declare openly many times on many platforms on different occasions even i told bhagwan which is on record before many vips i said i have only one desire to be born again and again step into your door step and spread your divine message other than that i have no attraction for life nothing that is only that therefore my friends so what is but what is rebirth it's only ego they say that therefore birth when one is born meaning ego has taken birth 
death what does it mean it is not it's only body that is perishing ego is anxious ready because we keep one pair of clothes ready as we have our shower immediately come out change your shower apply some spray and come out am i not right similarly we keep one pair of clothes ready as we go for shower similarly the death is something related to the body but the ego is anxious to have new dress new dress so it is ego that is born and it is the ego that is responsible for rebirth as it is very very clear actually speaking actually speaking life principle does not need any body does not need any body simple example for electricity bulb is not necessary fan is not necessary mic is not necessary electricity is electricity but as it gets into the bulb you get the light as it gets into the fan you get the breeze as it makes the mic work the sound is magnified but they are not necessary for the electricity similarly for the life body is not necessary but for ego body is absolutely necessary ego needs body so it is the ego that has got rupa buddhi rupa buddhi meaning fascination for a form fascination love for a form rupa buddhi is the quality of the ego it runs after it why when when you sit immediately we think of the family immediately we think of the office immediately we think of our friends first we think of enemies also so we think of all these fellows one after one one after one, one go on because this wants form it cannot be idol so many people say i am uh, feeling the absence of swam you will feel the absence of every form you will feel the absence of every form because ego has got this quality this identity this manifestation this experience this expression with a form then once there is no ego no question of form so those of us who are full of form i should say form centered or form fullness it is the dance or the magic of the ego or ahankara because it is it runs after first of all the ego gets attached to the family it gets attached to friends then money then position something or other something or other it requires it therefore it is amply clear that the ego that is born and the ego that takes rebirth and the ego that is responsible for our attachment and that runs after form a roop a buddhi then comes the next question why am i miserable why am i sad why am i so happy why am i so jovial why that's again the drama of the ego it is the ego that is happy the same ego that is unhappy so happiness unhappiness birth death victory victory and defeat these all belong to ego only when once ego is gone no more of duality only oneness non duality that exists non dual divinity so my fear my frustration my anxiety my nervousness my tension apprehension they are all due to 
ego only. If I am angry with somebody, it's my ego. If I am in love with somebody, it's my ego. If I criticize somebody, it's my ego. If I want to show off to everybody what I am, again ego. Publicity, exhibitionism, these are all the expressions of ego. That will end up in elation, jubilation, or frustration, or depression. So, that is the whole drama of life. The whole drama of life is ego-centered. And this ego is false. Ego is not permanent. Why? When I go to sleep, sound sleep, without any dreams, where is the ego? I-ness is gone. Minus is gone. I, mine don't exist. You are just fast asleep. There's no ego there. So, when ego comes, all this nonsense gets, because that will be waiting at the door. Let me catch this fellow the moment he gets up from the bed. As you try to get up, ta-da, it occupies you completely. Puts you in a drum, puts you in a valley, or on the mountain top, or fry it in a pan, on a pan, frying pan. Whole life. Therefore, my friends, ego that is false, is responsible for the duality, is responsible for birth and rebirth, is responsible for fear, jubilation, anxiety, and tensions. And that ego is the main issue for every follower of religion and spirituality. But unfortunately, we consider religion and spirituality meant a ritual. You know, I go 108 times around Ganesha. I recommend you to make it 1,000 if possible. There are some say, you know, I starve every Saturday night. I recommend you to starve every night if possible. If you can, daytime also. One nuisance will be deleted from, from census. Why is that? So we think that religion is ritual. It is not. It is not. Bhagavan Sri Satya Sai Baba does not advocate religion. That will be very clear. He could attract thieves, thieves, aspirants, seekers across the globe, beyond religion, beyond language, beyond caste, community, race, because he has spread spirituality and not religion. Spirituality unites, religion divides. Therefore, spiritually speaking, spiritually speaking as we understand, it is tackling, handling, understanding this ego. What is this ego? When does it exist? Where does it exist? How does it disappear? Why it reappears? What am I supposed to do? What does what Baba say about it? What Adi Shankara says about it? What Ramana Maharshi says about it? What Paramahansa speaks about it? That is the main theology, if I am to say, or the essence of spirituality in which we have to involve, associate more intensely than ever, ever before. The second point I am also told emphatically, I think I am the mind, mind or ego, whatever you call it. Because I think I am the mind, I expect something special. I am very special, you know. That's why many people say, yeah, yeah, you know, I have been coming here for the last 30 years. So what? You have not developed even an inch. When you say you have been here for 30 years, it is an insult. It means I appeared for examination 10 times, failed successfully. What does it mean? 
So your seniority, 30 years coming, 50 years coming, it's a matter of shame. It is not that. What is the correct, proper hallmark of a spiritual aspirant as explained by Baba? Every one of us here think that I am the mind, I am the mind. We may say I am not the mind outwardly. <laughs> Theoretically anybody can say. But to the core, to the core, in practice, every moment, in all three periods of time, in, three, in all the three states of consciousness, how many of us feel that I am not the mind? We feel that I am the mind, I am the mind. So long I feel that I am the mind, what happens? All the duality comes. Mind is the cause for duality. Why? The moment I wake up, I just laugh or feel sad. I dance, sometimes totally fall, totally fall flat. All the dual experiences because of the mind only, the ego only. So now the spirituality is this. The wider the distance, wider the gap between the real I and the mind. The real I is the spirit or the soul or conscience or consciousness. The real spirit, self, what you may call. The distance between the self and the mind, wider, wider it is. I just, I'm closer, closer, closer to the divine experience. Closer to the mind, away from the divine experience. So, mind and divine experience are inversely proportional to each other. Closer the mind you are, farther from the divine experience. Away from the mind you are, you are closer to the divine experience. Because mind is ego or illusion. It is dualistic. This is this kind of sadhana. How to dissociate myself with my mind? That is by process what is called self inquiry or Atma Vicharana. Self inquiry or Atma Vicharana. Who am I? I am so and so finish. You need one more year. Oh, I am that and oh, okay, ten more years, okay. You don't know who I am, hundred lives to come. So, so long this I or ego plays its drama, identifying with the position, authority, position, qualification, oh, status, dignity, prestige, all that nonsense associated with it, I need to be born again and again. There's no solution to that. Therefore, my friends, now what shall I do? Now what shall I do? What for is the life? Shall I just run for darshan? Or shall I hurry myself to attend Nagar Sankirtan? What shall I do now? At one sentence. Right now, while alive, while in this body, while alive, if I am free from my ego, I am jnani or man of wisdom. Difference between jnani, a realized soul, and the rest of the world is only this. Realized soul is totally free from the ego, while the all the rest identify with the ego. So our attempt, our job today is to give up the ego slowly and slowly. Yeah, one, one may say, I have given up today. It is waiting at the door to catch your neck. Something like a cat that will jump through the front door or back door or through the window, something like that. It will try to get in. So, slowly and slowly. First, we should know what ego is to be free from. One thing I recall happily. 
when I am not affected, when I am not affected by praise or blame, I am trying to give up my ego day by day. If anyone says Anil Kumar is a great man, how is that so? Okay. Since how long you know me and my greatness? <laughs> Since how long you know me and my greatness? <laughs> Finish, gone. Life is a waste. Therefore, praise should not make you elated, jump in joy. Or any comment or criticism should never make you frustrated or depressed. If anyone says, Anil Kumar, something wrong with you, oh, where do you come from? Let's meet outside. I have few people engaged to finish you off. <laughs> That's what politicians do, you know. So this kind of reaction to the praise and blame, if you are not affected, meaning you are slowly trying to be egoless, egoless, slow, by and by, we can be egoless. First sign is this. The second sign, if I develop the spirit of choiceless awareness, choiceless awareness, meaning I want this, I don't want this. Meaning you want to exercise your choice. You want to exercise your choice. The moment you exercise your choice, you are cut by the ego. It will make you dance. Position I want. But you, position you lose. Status I want. The first you lose. So the moment this gets into our life, there begins the drama. Therefore, my friends, let us identify what ego is. The identification marks are how we respond to the situation, how we react to a comment, how we respond to a praise or encomium or tribute. That shows how, ego, how close we are to the ego, how far we have identified ourselves with the ego. As I said, choiceless awareness. Choiceless, choiceless awareness, meaning let go. Let go. Simple example. When a stick is on the river, a stick on the surface of the river, the stick goes on floating in the direction the water flows. The stick moves on the surface of the water along the direction of the flow of the water. The stick does not resist. The stick does not jump. The stick does not sink. Let go. That's what choiceless awareness is. So choiceless awareness is a second step to identify to recognize the presence or the absence of ego. And third, third point. Third thing is, all right, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Since I cannot exercise my own choice, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, O Father. You know what is good for me. You know what will help me, what will contribute to my growth. You know much better than what I know. You can handle my life in much better way than whatever I think of. This is what we call surrender. This kind of surrender is a method in the path of devotion, bhakti marga when one can be free from ego, egolessness. Then the fourth method. If I go on meditating on this, who am I? 
Who am I? Am I the body? No. Am I the mind? No. Am I the intellect? Step by step. We go on inquiring. Am I the body? No, sir. Who said you are not the body? If I am the body, ten years back I was quite fine. Now I am not. After ten years you may try to avoid me also. <coughs> Because body naturally when young all are quite handsome. Yes. When all of us got married newly just look into those photographs and feel happy. Better we don't look into mirror today. Better we break the mirrors after one or two years, that's all, not for long. So if I'm the body, I should continue the same shape. No, I'm not the body. Then if I'm the mind again, my tastes are changing. What I liked as a boy is different from what I like as a grown-up man. What I like as a grown-up man is quite different from a householder from a professional life and a retired man. It goes on changing. If a fellow likes, I want to play marble at the age of 40, his place is lunatic asylum. His place is lunatic asylum, not here. So with maturity, with maturity, as we age, progressively, gradually, there will be change in our attitude in our thought process, in our likes and dislikes. Simple stories we like then. Today, all right, tell your grandchildren, not to me. Okay. Even after getting into spirituality, religious path, what was interesting in the beginning? Thrill. I'll come to that aspect also. Thrill. That is really killing our energies. When we first come to Baba, or when we first come to any pilgrim center, like Tirupati, Varanasi, Badari, Kedar, Haridwar, any temple, church, monastery, synagogue, Gurudwara, anything. What is your first experience there? Thrill. Excitement. What happens later? Fifty percent gone. After that, totally gone. After that, take things for granted. What about the thrill? What about that original excitement? It is not there. Therefore, my friends, excitement is the quality of ego. Ego wants excitement. If anybody asks you, please close your eyes and sit, ah, anybody will tell like that. Meditate for some time, ah, my, grand, my great grandmother used to say that. No, no, I'm going to give you a watch now, come on. Ah, all will line up, stand for a queue. I'll tell your past life. And why past life? After all, past is past. If anybody say in the past life, you are Alexander the Great. Uh, today, beggar the Great. Uh, how am I interested about the past life after all? But mind wants excitement. So in the field of religion also, we want thrills. We want excitement, something new, something special. Are you are not new, why do you expect new things to happen? The consciousness is neither new nor old, it is eternal, immortal, only one. How do you expect something new to happen? But ego, something thrill, what's happening there? What's happening? If five people group and talk, let me know. I want to know excitement there. Therefore, excitement is the nature 
of ego. Let us be free from that. Why? Sir, somebody told me, a person, it seems, will tell you what is all in your mind. I told him, if he tells what is, the, what is all there in my mind, why should you tell me? It is my mind, I know what is happening here. Why should you tell me? I, I'll tell you what you are thinking. Are I'm thinking, why should you tell me? I'll tell you what you are thinking, okay? Please stop thinking about me. I will tell him that fellow. Please stop thinking about me. Think of yourself. Who am I? Not who are you? I'll tell him. Therefore, my friends, it is excitement that makes us run after people. It is excitement that makes us change our gurus. It is excitement that makes us go from one temple to another, from one circus to another circle, from one movie to another movie, from one religion to another excitement, excitement. A beautiful quality of ego, the dirtiest ever. Therefore, my friends, this quality of ego that wants excitement, thrills, will not help for spiritual growth. Will not help for spiritual growth. Excitement will not help for spiritual growth. One man said, long back, it seems at one place, a person challenged, I can walk on water. You can walk on water? When the same thing is said to Paramahamsa, he said, a boat will take you, you don't need to walk. <laughs> hmm? that, because you want excitement. Therefore, my friends, excitement will not help our spiritual growth. Secondly, you cannot expect excitement throughout your life unless one is a lunatic. Supposing I laugh, something, some fun, some humor, some wit, or you cut a joke, I smile. But if you go on laughing like that continuously, what will happen? You'll take me to a psychiatrist, to a mental hospital. So excitement is not eternal. <coughs> excitement is not permanent. Not only that, excitement is emotional. When you meet your beloved, after 10 years, you feel excited. So excitement is full of emotion, full of tension. But excitement welcomes something new to happen. Something new to happen, but you cannot expect new to happen every moment, no. So excitement is only a welcome. And if I'm tempted by this excitement, suppose somebody will, I'll show in my palm, your picture, come on and see. Huh? Or you can see your picture in a mirror, why in my palm? Excitement is childish. Excitement is childish full of tension, not permanent, not eternal. Let us understand it. And then excitement is cheap. It is very cheap to attract people by different methods, by different techniques, for one's own self-glorification. It is all very cheap tactics. Supposing I see that you are excited and get some donation from you. It only means it is a commodity. Excitement is a commodity. Saleable. Very good business, very good business. Therefore, my friends, ego runs after excitement. Let us not be that. But to transcend that ego, to go beyond that ego, no more of excitement. What do I need now? All right, you say excitement is not good. 
You say excitement is not eternal. And you say excitement will not help for my spiritual growth. So what do I need? Ecstasy. We need ecstasy, not excitement. Excitement and ecstasy are different. Simple example. When Swami talks to you in an interview room, when he appears in your dream and talks to you so endearingly, so intimately, when he suddenly manifests in your residence, there are many people who tell me, so I saw Swami here, I saw him there. I'm not a fellow dis to dismiss all these things. Who am I? I cannot say no to your experience. Therefore, all right, when you see Swami physically here, you are ecstatic, not excited. When Swami appears and talks to you something, you are ecstatic. When he touches you, you are ecstatic. When you converse with him, you are ecstatic. So ecstasy is different from excitement. Then what is this ecstasy? Three points. It is calm, cool, and silent. Calm, cool, and silent. Excitement is very hot, but it is never calm. Excitement is highly disturbing. It is emotional. It is never cool. It is never calm. It is never silent. A man of excitement, he won't keep quiet. You know what happened there? You know what happened to me? You know what happened? He's not silent. Therefore, as against ecstasy, as opposed to excitement, ecstasy is in coolness, in your silence, in your calmness. Then, this ecstasy is continued when once you experience. Excitement is not continued. When you go to some cinema, watch some scenes that you like, you are excited. You like fighting. Oh, there they fight, you are excited here. Very good. Some dance going on, you are excited here. Some music, you just play the tune like that. Beat. So, we are excited for the moment. But ecstasy is continuous. How do I say that? Because it is silence. It is calm. It is cool. That calmness, that coolness, that silence are the very expressions of ecstasy. That's what we need to search for, run after, look after, look for. It is full of life. I can say, I was ecstatic, excited. I don't say, I was ecstatic. I am ecstatic. I am ecstatic. I was excited. I will be ex excited. But I am, I have been ecstatic. It is one of continuity to eternity. But, but, how to be ecstatic? One have to wait for it. One have to wait for it. Wait means what? In meditation. Wait means what? Focused attention. Wait means what? Alertness, awareness, wakefulness, focused attention. That will make me ecstatic, which remains throughout our life. And this ecstasy is very precious. Excitement is not precious. Excitement, as I said, is very cheap. But ecstasy is very precious valuable and eternal. It is not a commodity to be sold in the market. It is something valuable 
eternal. Therefore, my friends, egolessness meaning ecstasy. Egoless meaning unmindful of praise and blame. Egolessness means to be away from the mind. Distancing myself from my mind. And ecstasy meaning trying to be nearer, nearer and closer to the self, what I am really. Ah, what I am really is. The real self, closer to that, that is egolessness. Devotional path of you, surrendering everything to him. Let go, choiceless awareness, my friends, in this process, in this process, we may be meeting every day in a satsang hall like this. We may be talking, you may be listening. But I consider myself totally a student, that's all. Totally a student, in the name of Baba, I swear and repeatedly tell you, I'm just a student. Being a teacher for 49 years, I may have by virtue of habit the capacity to explain, ability to convince, nothing more than that. Why? Because these are not the things especially known to me. If the speaker thinks that he who knows, understand that he does not know. The one who thinks he knows, does not know. I'm not teaching anything that you do not know. Then what for, what for it I'm here? We are growing together. Sahana bhavatu, sahana bhunaktu. We grow together, we think together, we share together, and understand together, grow together, that's what it is. Therefore, the message is important, but not the messenger. The letter you get is more important, not the postman. Post runner or postman will give you the letter. You don't keep the letter there and try to engage the postman. How are you? How is your family? When you join service, you want some money, do you ask that? He is not important. Letter is important. Similarly, messenger or speaker is not important. The message is important. The message, what he wants to convey. Why? The messenger is only a bamboo stick. A bamboo stick which is hollow. He is just a water pipe. He will allow the water to flow. The pipe cannot say, I have the water, I am flowing. I repeat, shut up. You don't block the water, I thank you. So, pipe allows the water flow. Bamboo stick allows the flow of air and serves as a flute adorning the lips of Lord Krishna. Similarly, all the messengers, messenger need not necessarily a speaker. We may talk to each other in small groups. We may meet a friend, exchange our views. We are all messengers. We are each one, teach one, exchange our views. We are all the messengers. In that process, we should be a bamboo, a flute. And not only that, a flute will not think that I am the flute. Because it is empty, inside completely empty. And the flute has no choice. It allows the song, that's all. It won't stop. The flute won't say, come on, play now. It won't say, stop you. It won't stay. It has no choice. Choiceless awareness is the quality of the bamboo stick or the flute. It will not hinder, it will not stop. It allows the air to flow because it is hollow. And moreover, 
फ्लूट विल नॉट डिस्टार्ट डाइवर्ट मिस इंटरप्रेट इट विल अलाउ एज इट इज दैट्स रीजन वाई माई फ्रेंड्स एवरी टाइम आई एम वेरी पर्टिकुलर टू मैंशन दैट दीज आर फ्रॉम साई लिटरेचर आई एम वेरी पर्टिकुलर टू से दे आर कलेक्टेड फ्रॉम हिज मोस्ट प्रेशस बुक्स डिस्कोर्सेस nothing original so just allow it flow we don't distort actually speaking actually speaking every one of us not man here every if you talk to somebody you are the messenger if you talk to somebody you are the messenger not necessary a messiah no if you talk to anybody you are a messenger why god made you a messenger you know why god made you a messenger to be nobody if you are somebody you are not a messenger so a messenger is a device of the divine to make you nobody and not somebody when you are nobody you can make others also nobody if you are somebody you want to make body somebody that anybody can do it not that therefore we every one of us should feel that we are nobody i am nobody you are nobody he is the reality there's only reality we are nobody just allow things to flow that's what it is and this is a technique to destroy ego to feel that i am nobody is the best way to remove ego uh nobody seems to care for me why nobody need to care you nobody why to feel that somebody should care for me is a sign of ego if nobody cares they are helping me to be free from ego thank you very much i should give a big banquet to those people who are helping me to be free from ego so to be nobody is the thing that is the most important when you are nobody when i am empty no position no authority no influence no popularity nothing very very ordinary what will happen tremendous message comes from you tremendous unbelievable ecstatic statements come from you if you think i am somebody you go comes in people start leaving the hall when one ego comes that destroys your performance on the other hand if you are nobody come on you can touch the heart of everybody because you are not new they are not new the only one that will prevails you will have clarity when you are nobody if one confuses it means ego is playing when you are egoless there will complete clarity in your expression total clarity in your thought it takes you beyond you when i am nobody i am something beyond that's what it is my friends when this truth is known whole minus ego i am that eternal truth satya sai baba satya i am the self the truth when once the truth is known all rest of things will follow you that i am the self which is the truth satyam gnanam anantam brahma i am the eternal truth that is known all the rest will follow you example when prime minister or chief minister comes all officers should follow him all officers similarly if i experience myself senses body mind intellect outer inner senses will follow me that's the reason why a man of self awareness is the greatest man a man who experiences the self is the greatest man a maharishi a maharishi great man because he is a realized man that's what it is let's love the self more than the senses more than the mind this is possible 
I can love the self more when I develop sense of detachment. A sense of detachment. More in the next talk. Thank you for being here. Thank you very much. Om Samastha Loka Sukhino Bhavantu Samastha Loka Sukhino Bhavantu Samastha Loka Sukhino Bhavantu जय बोलो भगवान श्री सच्चाई बाबा जी की जय बोलो भगवान श्री सच्चाई बाबा जी की थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू